about is that smoking rule. <laughs> Even I don't know what to call it now. Our houses are Obiko, constructed Obiko. with environmental Obiko. considerations here in the UK. Happy vaping. Thank you. And you know I vape. <laughs> <laughs> and let, let me let when I'm talking about vaping. Sorry, mentor Shadi, before before I answer your question. One thing I, I like about here, apart from what we've been talking about, is that smoking rule. They really, really have strict smoking rule, which I really appreciate. Because in the UK, if you are not an active smoker, you are a passive smoker. They will. Thank you, ma. Huggy. Huggy, 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 huggy. Let me give you a big, big hug. <laughs> I grab it. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> All this run around you are doing, that is God, from Jackpa to Jackpa. Run around. Jackpa, Jackpa, oh, from Jackpa to Jackpa. <laughs> yeah, it's nice seeing you. Nice having you here today. Um, family members, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. And the beautiful face you are seeing with me is AYO Dot. Uh, she's a descendant of Florence Nightingale. She's borrowed the mantra of Jack Ma from the owners, and so she even initially just from Nigeria to the United Kingdom, and some weeks or months ago she decided to also leave us here uh to be taking good care of her king <laughs> and she ran off to be looking after biden and his cohorts yeah yes oh blue how has it been it's great to have you here today <laughs> i'm happy to see you and thank you for having me yeah <laughs> Yeah, as you said, I moved in, uh, I moved from the UK to the US um, just like two months now. Yeah, two months, two, months. two solid months. So it's two months already. Yeah, uh -huh. it's two months already. <laughs> just oh. like yesterday. Just like yeah. yesterday. Yeah, it's two months already. And well, it's been good um it's been lovely i'm still trying to acclimatize myself to the new environment that i am now is really 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 quite different from the uk It's similar in so many things but at the same time there's diversity everywhere as we all know so they have their own similarities and they also have their own differences so okay. what i knew came from nigeria to the uk there was culture shock and now that i'm moving from the uk to the us there's also culture shock so shock, but shock, shock. okay it's thank been, you we come to culture shock at some point we come to culture shock or what you meant by culture shock now my first question to you how many gunshots have you had? <laughs> this question is very funny. By the grace of God, and as God continues to live, I have not had any gunshots, and I will never hear any gunshots. In Jesus' name. I have not seen a gun. I have not had any gunshot. It's been very peaceful. It's been okay. And I will never hear any gunshots. I think really it's it, the the um noise making and everything i'm not saying there's no gun and gun violence here of course it is but i think when you are in the states itself is not as loud because what you hear on social media people tend to exaggerate everything you know and how how the world is is whatever is bad news would spread spread like wildfire but good news you 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 really hear it but any this little thing bad then you it spreads like wildfire. So I it think will not even the come near our dwellings. The bad yeah, news will not, will not come near us. Not there, but I have my two months here. I have never seen, 
I never had my, and my colleague at talk. I was telling her that, oh, I'm, I'm still scared. And every time she said, she has been here for, she was born here. She's, she's American. She was, she's white. She's been born here. She's lived all her life here. And she said, she said she herself has never had any gunshot and she's 26 years of age. That she has not seen and she has not had. People, you can buy a gun if you want. Said her parent does not own one. She does not own one. She has never seen and she has never heard of any girl. And she's 26 years and she has been in the, uh, living in the U.S. That would be her testimonies every time now and then in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. So, oh so face. far, so good. No gunshots, no gunshots. Thank God. No. Thank God. We never hear that. Now, um, what motivated your moves? Why did you leave Nigeria, the precious home country where we were born, bred, where you can feel free at any point in time, where you can eat street food whenever you desire, where you can have everything that your calls and beckons to be candid. So why did you yeah. decide to leave? And then if when you left, why UK first? Mm. And why moving again? Yeah, thank you very much, Bento. Um, I I think why I moved from Nigeria to the UK in the first instance was I just wanted to leave. I, I didn't I my UK was not in my widest imagination and uh, so i know uk to be a country but i've never wanted to move there i've always been like if i want to move anywhere it would either be the us or canada and at a point in time i tried canada that was when i nearly got married i tried all these express entry and provincial nominee stuff which didn't work out and i was not even eager to travel i was just living my life <clears throat> but I, I would say the main thing that made me left nigeria was insecurity hmm. like i was very scared of my life I, I my my house was being robbed every now and then back to back my kids were scared we were scared so we just had to leave as soon as we could how could you be scared of nigeria and you are not scared of the usa where we hear so many things every time sorry, yeah. oh sorry you sorry, know girl. <coughs> we don't have this in the uk don't infect me please don't infect me don't <laughs> infect me <coughs> oh, sorry. You want to grasp a cup of water? I don't know if these kids can hear me. They are downstairs. I'm upstairs. They won't hear me. So I'll be fine. Okay. So, yeah, um, I was I was scared of Nigeria, really, because what I'm robbers, not I'm robbers. I'll say burglars did to me was very scary. Anytime I'm leaving my house, I'll be putting an oil in oil. They came to my house, robbed it. They took all my windows out. When I got, all the neighbors were gathered and I had a fence, I had a dog. They, my dog, I don't know what they did to it. They just the dog. I never believed, believed in jazz, but I think it's real. Because by the time I got, they called me from work. My family was in church. They had to call us because they just saw that our gate was opened and some group of people, I don't know how they got in. Our dog was not backing. The whole house was in shambles. Whatever they took is not even what is spoiled in the house. Whatever they took cannot even be compared to it. So it was really scary, and they did come back again. They came back <coughs> again. They did come back, and it was getting very scary because my husband was not. It was really not like the people that want to travel or was bent on leaving the country. But I said no. We got to leave, and then. UK was the fastest then. Yeah, fastest then, like now. It's become gold. Yeah, now it's gold. gold. Then it was, it was, I won't say very easy because you still needed to pass. IELTS and all, but at least within six months or a year, you could. So I decided to opt for UK. I had already started my US processing then. Oh, right. So there was ban. Trump. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. That was the was, first time, uh, Trump's first time. Yeah. So Trump, we were on ban. And then I was like, oh, this thing, I don't know when this would, if they're ever going to unban Nigerians or whatever, let me just go to the UK. And off I went to the UK. So that's it. Welcome, welcome to the USA. So you vaping. Well, <laughs> 
<laughs> what? <laughs> I saw you I'm with pipe. So as I was saying, I, I think I wrote my NCLEX early 2021. Yeah, that's when I wrote my NCLEX. No, no long after I came into the UK. I came into the UK 2020 and I wrote my NCLEX early 2021. So, and when I wrote my NCLEX, I, I, I wrote it because I was pressured to write it. Because, you know, I was my then. I think they were already hearing news that ban was going to um, Trump was going to unban us. So my agency, and I didn't tell them I'd already moved to the UK. I was, yeah, but later I had to tell them because they wanted to. They were telling me si, um, to do my visa to South Africa and all those. Stuff. So I had to tell them, no, I'm in the UK. I can always write it in the UK. So, and then I, I wrote it in the UK in 2021. So I don't know if that's new generation or old generation. <laughs> I don't even know. The, the, that new generation is really, really new. I think like it came late 2022 or somewhere around oh. that time. All right, whatever the generation you've passed. <coughs> so, um, you were band six nurse here and you were non-clinical. Now, yes. you've moved to the USA. Are you working non-clinical too? No, 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 no. I'm not working on clinical. I'm working um clinical area because... Um, really, uh, the kind of nurses they need here more the, is the clinical nursing side. So there's more opportunity in the clinical nursing than in the non-clinical. So I would say it might be a bit hard for you to transition from the UK to the US just from your non-clinical nursing side. Yeah, because the way nursing works here in the US is quite different from the way it works in the uk yeah you need to do your specialty in that area before you can work there although you could be lucky but you know in the us in the uk all you need is uh, um, if, if you interview and then you can sell yourself you can't get anywhere you want to go you can you can work in any specialty you want to you necessarily do not have to have a specialty in that um departments or units before you are you can work there but it doesn't work like that yet you need to be a specialty in that have a certification <coughs> sorry I, <coughs> can give you. you more time to vape <coughs> is this your vape itself that is making me cough <laughs> hey Okay, ma. What's so, going on? Yeah. <laughs> what did you catch yeah, there that, in the USA? Yeah, I, I had a terrible cough for for a while now, since like four or five days. Um, but anyways, I'll you'll be, be fine. fine. <laughs> yeah, I will be. Yes. So, what's the clinical exposure here and there like? Give me, give us just some mm. brief um yeah I would comparison say it's, it's similar very similar similar but, yeah it is okay. similar the only thing is that um in the facility where i work i was because before i went non-clinical i used to work in the surgical department and here also i work in the surgical unit so what i used to do in the uk when i was in the surgical unit the same kind of patient, the same kind of diagnosis and everything is really the same thing I'm seeing here in my clinical unit, um, surgical unit where I work as we speak. The only difference is that they have more equipment. More equipment? They have more, yeah, they have more equipment. They have more hands. More staff. More staff. They have more staff. They have more equipment. They have more technology. I think it's the same thing, equipment. Their technology here, I think, is top notch. Top they notch. are really, really doing well with their technology. And that technology has really helped to even reduce the stress of mm -hmm. nurses. Okay. Apart from that, you do your own nursing job. Nursing jobs? Yeah, you do what you are doing as a nurse. Your nursing job strictly as your... Although not like you can't do other jobs. Because you know nursing, we are just multi tasking you know that's what nursing is about but i like it here because 
you really focus on what you focus on, which is your nursing job. There's somebody that will have to think about this. You don't need to think about this data. The way they just made that system, especially in I say, I like it because you don't need to worry. Like, say, for example, I was asking my preceptor because they still put me someone to oversee what I'm doing. And then I said, when this patient was discharged from this room, how come not up to three minutes, somebody was already there, uh, stripping the bed, cleaning the room, putting everything there again. And did you call that I did not know? Because I was thinking she called. Because normally in my facility where I used to work in the UK, when a patient is there, you as a nurse will be the one to clean, make the bed for the new patient to come. So And you will call domestic. That, yeah. So or you call domestic if it was an infectious patient to clean the room. She said, no, she didn't call anybody. I said, how come they know that somebody has been discharged? Said immediately somebody is discharged. As you discharge the person in the system, it goes to them and they know that there's an empty room that needs to be cleaned. Automatically, they come. That you don't need to call them. They come automatically and they wipe the room. They put all supplies. When you go into the room, you, be, you think it's an hotel room. Toothpaste, toothbrush, everything. You are welcome. Food menu is there. Everything is set, ready for the next patient. You don't, you a nurse, you don't need to bother your head about it. If you want to call transport, everything is just, just need to do a click, plam, they are here. Even, it's just so, the technology is so easy. We have robots that we can send on errands, go and take this from my ward, send this to this other ward. So it makes the job much easier. Is it stressful? Yes, nothing is stressful everywhere. But at least the little things that will add to your nursing stress has been taken away by technology and being staffed, fully staffed. So that's different. Fully staffed. Thank you. So what's your typical day at work in the last two months? What, what's it like? What do you okay. do in a typical day, your day shifts? Your, and then um, I would like you to say some things about your shift pattern. Then, besides the shift pattern, what's your typical day like? When you resume in the morning, what will you do? When you resume in the afternoon, what are the things you do? If you are going for night shifts, what are the things you do? I want to, we, we would like to have an idea. I am, and my people that are watching you from home and are deliberating on joining you in the USA. And uh, yeah, we want to know what your typical okay. day looks like as a registered nurse there. So um, I've not started doing night shifts yet. I think my first night shift will be in next week, I think. So two weeks time, I'm not sure. So my regular shifts, the long day I've been doing, is just the same as the UK setting. It's a 12 hour shift. We have 30 minutes break, unpaid. Or like the UK, you have one hour. So you're lucky UK people. <laughs> yeah, 30 minutes unpaid break. And you work for 12 hours. But the way it works here, we, are, we work for three days in a week. That's your full-time duty. That is rather than the NHS where we used to work. That we split and they will be adding and the dog will be reducing. And some managers yeah, will not they, even they understand. They will start cheating you. <laughs> every time that thing used to get me so angry. Like, yeah, yeah, all in hours. Yeah, there's no day I don't know. Ah, oh, my, you work four days here, you work three days here this <laughs> work your three days. yeah <laughs> the six hours, three days. so what how, how it's done is that you resume 15 minutes before time and you close 15 minutes so that i can you know when they that 15 minutes before you resume and the 15 minutes after that you close equals 30 minutes that will be taken for your break you know so that your 12 hours can be complete so i will say we resume we do 12 hours 30 minutes because you, we resume at 6.45 and we close at 7.15. 7 That's 12 hours, 30 minutes. Because if you take your 30 minutes break out of it, then you'll be paid for 12 hours. You get what I mean? So you're not owing anybody and nobody's owing you. And you only work three days in a week full time and you have your four days off. Okay. So what about <laughs> night shifts? So night shift is the same thing. You resume by 6.45 p.m. And you close by 7 15 a.m and you work for three days and you have your four days off. so if Thank you work you. your three days better you can have your four days resting and doing nothing okay so i said what designed 
you know, some places, the words are designed in such a way that for the 12 hours, except when you are on break, you can't, you can't drag a chair and sit down or what, do anything. Oh, okay. It's not the same here. You can sit. Every, we don't have words. We have every, with private rooms. Sorry, can't That's hear it. that clearly. Sorry. We, you, 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 are, you can sit down. Yeah. The words are designed. We, we don't have words. We have private rooms. Okay. So it's like an hotel. For example, you know how hotel is that you have rooms in the hallway. Yeah, that is how it is. And then each room has a computer and a stool. So when you finish attending to the patient, you can sit down on that computer on that stool and do your documentation. We also have like all these pushable computers, like the ones we use in the UK. Yeah. Those ones we push around. Yeah. We have them. So you can push them around too. You can use the one by the patient's room. Every room has a computer outside with a stool that you can sit to document. So you can sit down to document. There are chairs for you, not chairs, tools in front of each room by the computer where you're expected to sit and document. So you have so many places that you can sit and document. So it's not like you're going to be standing all through. Of course, you are going to be busy, like as it is with nursing profession, you're not supposed to be late, you still find something to do, but you can sit and document. So yes, you're allowed to sit and document. All right. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so very much. Relationship with colleagues, what does it look like? I know it's just two months, but two days actually is enough for you to actually have a, a grasp of what you are going to face here. So what's mm. it like with your colleagues down so, here? Um, well, I don't want to be very forward now because I don't know what tomorrow will be, but because I'm still getting to know them, and, but from what I've seen, we don't know what will happen tomorrow. I find them to be more friendly than the, my British colleagues. You get what I mean? I find them to be more friendly because that does not mean that they are friendly and they are nice or they have my good intentions in, on, on, at art. It doesn't mean you being friendly or laughing at someone does not necessarily mean you like the person. But they are more, I think the Americans are more friendly, like they, they are more outspoken, they are not reserved. Okay? Like they come to you, like when I need, oh, hello, I, can I, how can I pronounce your name? Oh, they said you just moved from the UK. They come to you, they greet you. Not every one of them, but at least most of them will come. How are you doing? Oh, I heard you. Oh, are you the nurse that they said? So I find them to be more friendly, even in the store. They are more friendly. They have they want to have conversation with you. Even in the neighborhood, you see people waving at you from afar and then saying hi to you. My neighbor in the UK, I never, I don't know how they look like if they are dark. You or do not know your neighbor in the UK. Yeah, I know. So yeah. Except even, if they want to repeat, they report you to someone yeah. or somebody. Yeah, even they my, can report my, my, someone. Yeah, Except you have very good neighbors. Yeah. Children play around, like your neighbor's children, one of the knock at your door and call your children to come out. The yeah. road is very big, the front yard yeah, is I think big. I have such beautiful neighbors too around, but it wasn't like that before. Yeah, so they can play around and everything, but my kids have really, really been enjoying that because in the UK, after school, we, we lock them inside. There's nothing to do, nobody to talk to, nobody to play with. And at work, They've been friendly, like they come to you and just say, oh, hello, how are you? But like when I nearly got to the UK, nobody was greeting me. Some people, I even greet them, they will not answer me. Like, yeah, yeah, you will greet some people, they will just be looking at you like, but when you get to know them very well, of course, you'll be friendly with them, but they are more reserved at the first instance. I mean, the them while working in the UK, but the US people are more open and more friendly. That does not mean to say they are nice. You can you get what I mean? But at least they are more outspoken and not as reserved 
as the British people. That's what I think they are. But I think two months is too early for me to judge. Maybe. It's too early. It's too early. But at least you can you can compare with your first two months here. So yeah. there is this yeah. um workplace uh, approaches around. Two months is still too young to know. But then two months here, you would have heard one or two things or possibly felt one or two things when you were here within two months. Now, in these two months, have you felt, have you, have they palpated your pulses? Those, um, back? <laughs> well, if I'm being sincere, no. Although I'm expecting it, because, you know, I have that high hopes that mm, somebody is going to do a proko about me, because I'm carrying that, my UK kind of <laughs> mentality in my head. You get what I mean? So if somebody is even saying, no, how you Oh, sure you want to talk as they told you something you got that so i think i have it in my heart already that these people are going to do this this is what they are used to but they have not done it to me do they do it yes have they done it to me no so they do it they do it because i've met someone that they said she has been here longer than me and she said yes they do it so i don't think there's much difference between the aproko in the uk and in the us but they've not done it to me, really. And I don't know, maybe it's a little bit reduced here than there. But they, they also do it very well. Okay. They do it. So keep that in do it. Thank you very much. You do have, or we do see that you guys do have bigger rooms. We live in, I don't know what to call it now. Our houses are Kubiku, constructed Kubiku. with environmental Kubiku. considerations here in the UK. Happy vaping. Thank you. And you know I vape. <laughs> <laughs> and let, let me, let, well, I'm talking about vaping. Sorry, Mentor Shadi, before, before I answer your question. One thing I, I like about here, apart from what we've been talking about, is that smoking rule they really really have strict smoking rule which i really appreciate because in the uk if you are not an active smoker you are a passive smoker they will lure you into smoking by blowing smoke into your your nose but yeah i can tell you since i've been here i can count the number of people i've seen smoking do they smoke yes but they don't smoke publicly like they do in the us oh, no. in the uk sorry they are strict smoking rule in my hospital you are not allowed to smoke in any vicinity of the hospital. You have to drive your car outside anywhere you want to go. But that hospital, you cannot smoke. Um, the apartment where that I stayed when I was having my training, when I knew you came in Florida, everywhere in that apartment, you can call police for you if they find you smoking. So I have not, I don't, I rarely see people blowing smoke like they do on the streets of uk in in audi and everything i really see it here really everywhere their smoking rule is very very good they don't you can smoke but everywhere because if you can't smoke here you you better not smoke because if you need to drive five minutes to go and smoke then why why do you want to waste your time to smoke and all those five five minutes smoking break that they used to have in the uk no in my colleague at work, none of them have ever said I'm going to have a fag or whatever. I've never seen them. I'm not saying they don't smoke, but I really like their smoking policy. So the environment is so pure. Nobody has blown any kind of smoking. I do not wish to, to inhale to me since I got here. That I really love about the U.S. Mm, that's, 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 that's very, very reasonable. I love that it's too. Very so good. it won't be like you're at work and somebody is going for fresh hair while you are continuing the job alone you know, and they come back to you to be to even go back and talk uh, at your back. I love it. I love it. I love it. I Thank you so it. very much. So <clears throat> the culture of tea, how is it over there? <laughs> Thank you that you are though. 